So what is the thing that I love the most about filmmaking and actually by YouTube too? Like I want to kind of tie them together. You know, what do I get out of this whole thing? What do I appreciate about it? You know, besides money, if I'm doing business or, you know, like what, what am I getting out of this? You know, what, what, what pays me? What's the payoff for spending all this time for putting all this effort into it, like setting up cameras and lights and what do I get out of this? You know, what's it for? You know, I mean, if I'm not making tons of money, I mean, obviously, if you're making a lot of money, then that's something that you're getting out of it. And it's your business. But you know how a lot of people make a lot of money and it's their business and they hate it? because they're doing corporate work or they're doing weddings or they're doing commercials or, you know, like maybe they're doing something that it just kind of takes away from the part of it that they loved. That happens to people. It happened to me in the music business, you know. Somebody got hold of me and tried to turn me into a pop star and suddenly the thing that I love more than anything on earth, music, you know, became a chore. Like I hated it. I just didn't enjoy it anymore, you know, and I was a jazz musician, like I came from, from a place where music was so spiritual for me. It was everything to me, you know, it was my, my lifeblood, like the reason I woke up every day. And I got to the point where I was just bored, you know, I was like, because I, I, you know, the last thing I wanted was that kind of attention, like, like to be honest with you, if I became successful at what they were trying to do with me, that would have been the worst case scenario for me because I didn't want to be a celebrity or so well-known. I just wanted to make music. I wanted to write music. I wanted to play music. I wanted to record music. I love all of it. I love practicing. I love learning how to play instruments. I love writing songs. You know, I love arranging songs. I love recording. I loved all the gear, everything. I loved how to learn. I loved to learn how to engineer how to record, how to get levels right, you know, how to use different microphones, how to EQ, how to compress, all of it. I loved it so much. But then, you know, when it came time to being a pop star, hated it. And so filmmaking, you know, like, what do you get out of this? I think what I get out of it is the exchange. You know, like when I finish even a YouTube video, you know, but especially a feature film, you know, something, let's talk about that. Like I work on a feature film for a year or two years or something like that. You know, what I get out of it is to be able to share it with people and then to hear back from them and to exchange, talk about it, you know, be in a theater with people and do a Q&A or talk to other artists, you know, and talk to them about the process of making that film. The, you know, the whole kind of exposition of my story, not just the story that I wrote, but my journey of creating a film. You know, what camera did I use? What lenses did I use? What kind of lighting did I use? How did I choose my locations? You know, how did I develop these characters? Where did I come up with this idea? Why did I do it? What's the purpose? Like, what do I hope to get out of it? What do I hope to get out of it? I think my favorite part is dealing with people, you know? And it's funny because I love the, the kind of solo aspect of creating a film because, you know, I'm a solo theater artist, so I'm used to working by myself. And I enjoy being all by myself when I create. You know, like I make movies differently than a lot of people. I'm the actor, I'm the story, I'm everything. I shoot it, I'm the cinematographer, I'm the lighting person, I'm the set designer, I'm the clothing person, I'm everything. I'm craft services, I'm everything. And I enjoy that process. It's very solitary. It's very spiritual for me to really just go over everything that I that I want to use and why I want to use it. And but I enjoy working with a dramaturge on my script, you know. And I love bouncing things off of people. Believe it or not, I love having a director. And I know a lot of solo artists they don't because you know I've always felt like as a solo artist you don't really need a director, not really, but if you want to get the most out of the project, to have a great director, that's something you can't do by yourself. You can't. You could do great work by yourself, but it can't be as great 
as it can be with the director. And part of that is I enjoy the exchange. It's inspiring, you know. It's, it's, you know, insightful. I learn so much from it. It's educational. It's necessary, you know, for me. But man, when I finish and I get to share it with people, that's everything. And I think what I love the most, you know, trust me, I don't take for granted any exchange with anybody. Even if you're my person, like you're my favorite person, you know, if I'm in love with you or you're my best friend or people I hang out with or whatever, even if I know you and you know me and, you know, obviously you're probably going to like what I do because you know what I do, you know. It's like you already like it as a baseline of you like my work. But I think what I really appreciate is when somebody sees my work for the first time ever. And maybe it's somebody who thinks about the world completely differently than I do, that sees the world completely in a different way, you know, that they believe in things that, that have no alignment with my belief systems. But yet there's still people with families and friends and mothers and fathers and daughters and sons and, you know, they have to pay their bills and they have to live and they have to eat and they have to take care of their pets and their car and like they're people, you know, we're all the same. But we might believe in different things and I love that kind of an exchange to talk about a story that I created, you know, to talk about this film, this, you know, visual kind of moving painting that I created and get to talk about it, especially with other artists, you know, filmmakers, of course, but even painters or photographers, you know, I learn a lot from just looking at photographers work about light, you know, that's everything to me. And I love the exchange, but I really love the exchange when it's somebody who's like surprisingly opposite from me. Because I'm always surprised by that. You know, like I feel so strongly about things in my life that I'm always shocked when somebody doesn't feel the same way, but I kind of like them. Like, how does that work? You know, how does it, how do you do that? Like when you have completely different, you know, values you know, maybe not core values, but values in terms of, you know, conservative versus liberal. Let's put it that way, because that's the way people talk about it. How do you like one another? But you do sometimes, oftentimes, you know. You know, one day I was uh, I was in a parking lot and it was a weird sound in my car when I drove into that parking lot. I knew something was going on underneath my car. so. I pulled in, you know, and I got out of the car and I just crawled underneath the car. And all of a sudden I see these two cowboy boots walk up. And that's weird where I live. Like, not a lot of cowboy boots near me. You know, I live in New York. But these cowboy boots walk up, so I come out of the car and it's this big guy, you know, big dude. And he says to me, you okay? You need some help? And um, I looked at his truck. And let's just say that politically, we could not be more opposite. Which means that our core values are probably very different. But then there are other core values that could be very much the same. Like we just want to, you know, have happy lives and be safe and have insurance and have enough food on the table and take care of our families. And you know, like in many, many ways, we could be the same. But especially in this country right now and in the world, we, we, we're like, polar opposites, but I felt this guy, he was so genuine, he was so sincere, he was so kind to just come up to me, a complete stranger, and ask me if I needed some help, you know? And I thought about that, I looked at that truck and I looked at all those stickers and those flags and I thought to myself, hmm, how can I like this guy? You know, that's what I appreciate about filmmaking when I have moments like that, you know? where I talk to somebody who's, you know, somebody who I would never probably hang out with, you know? I would never spend time with, I would never, we'd never be in the same circles, you know? And in fact, without knowing each other, if we look at the circles that we do spend time with individually, away from one another, separate from one another, we probably would tend to judge one another in a way that we wouldn't like each other. And yet, when I do a play, 
and I do these Q&As, I've had conversations with people who are way different than me. And we connect on this incredibly visceral level. You know, my movies, you know, like when I do a festival and I do a Q&A after the film and, you know, other filmmakers talk to me and they come from a whole different world, you know. They come from a whole different culture. Could be a different country, you know. Or, you know, in the United States, if you're from New York and then somebody's from like Oklahoma, it might as well be a different country. But yet we're filmmakers, you know, we're artists. We choose lenses for different reasons. We, like, we, we go through the same very spiritual practice. And you know, maybe somebody looks at it in a completely different way than me. Maybe they look at it in a more, you know, kind of, you know, literal way. Like I just happen to need 40 millimeters and I look at it like, oh, that feels good. I don't know why. And I didn't really want it to be filling up the frame in that way, but it feels right, you know, like whatever the case may be. We could be from completely different ends of the spectrum in terms of our culture, our families, our neighborhoods, our towns, our cities, our states, whatever. And yet, if I write a story that's a human story that somebody feels in their chest, suddenly we come together and then all of a sudden people start asking me questions like, how'd you shoot that? What camera did you use? You know, Did you shoot in log? What lenses did you use? Were they manual? Did you shoot anamorphic? Couldn't really tell if it was anamorphic or just wide angle, like what'd you do, you know, like all these things that we could talk about. How'd you shoot, how'd you get the audio? Sounds great. What'd you use, you know? Did you use a gimbal or was it all handheld? Like we have all these things in common. So much in common. Stuff in common that a lot of other people don't even know about. Like we're, we're actually in a very selective kind of club because we know, whether it be my theater work or, you know, my filmmaking or my music you know if I talk to people from different parts of the country or different parts of the world we might be very very different but we have this thing in common and we're both excited about it we're both inspired by it and I have come and inspired this person and then I have go gone to see films or gone to see theater with people that I don't agree with but they write these beautiful stories because at the end of the day, it's all about being human. And you know what? You can't make good art unless you're a good human. You can't. You can't tell a good story unless you're an empath. You know, your culture, your surroundings, the people in your area, they, they might push you to do things that maybe are cruel, you know? Maybe you're just flat out mean, you know? But at the core of you, if you can somehow write a story that everybody can relate to because it's a human story of the heart, you know, you know, with conflict and resolution that everybody can relate to, then you ain't much different than me. So it's kind of confusing how we can be so different, you know, how we can sit on different ends of the ends of the, the room, you know, and just be totally opposite from one another and and it winds up being angry and divisive and um, you know like it's a fight you know it's adversarial it's confrontational sometimes but what's interesting is when it comes to our art and for me when it comes to my filmmaking my theater work and my music I've seen it bring people together from different places I actually go to cities that are conservative cities on purpose when I'm developing work because I want to hear from people who I, I don't want to be preaching to the choir all the time. I want to talk to people who see the world differently than I do. I want to learn something, you know, I want to stay open, you know, and I might not get anything from it. I might disagree with everybody, but at least I tried and I think people appreciate that too. And I appreciate it when people come to me and it might get kind of fiery, you know what I mean? It might get a little edgy, you know, might, might seem kind of scary to certain people because, you know, we're all so passionate and we feel strongly about what we believe in and, you know, it's like no different than being an artist and when a dramaturge tells you you should take out a section or change something or whatever and if you're the one who wrote it, you're like, yo, that's my story. You know, I've had to do that many times where, you know, I had a dramaturge for my first play tell me to cut out the part of the play. That was what I thought the best part of the play. And after arguing back and forth, I actually did it because I respected him so much. 
And at the end of the day, he was right. And I wound up, I kept that section, I used it in another play. But he was right, that made it a much better story. Much more powerful, much stronger. And you know what? He's a guy from Kansas, you know? He's a gay man from Kansas. I'm a straight man from New York City, you know? But we were very much the same, very kindred spirit in many, many ways, you know? So that's what I'm interested in. I feel like, you know, as the world gets further and further away from allowing that type of exchange with one another, I feel like art still allows for that. And, and when I think about it, I think that's my favorite part of this work. It's the connection that I get to have with people, you know? Even when I'm just teaching a workshop or something like that, it's just the connection. I hate teaching. I mean, I'm a horrible teacher in my opinion, but people have taken my workshops. I think that they would argue with me, but I don't think I'm qualified to be a teacher. I'm, I, you know, I know how to write. I know how to perform. I know how to make films. I know how to get on stage. I'm not a teacher, but yet there I go sometimes. But it's really the exchange that I have with people. This, you know, where people are looking to me for guidance and then I'm learning, learning so much from the process from them and getting so much inspiration from them. Yeah, collaborators, you know, directors, producers, whatever, you know, PR people. Anybody who works with me, you know, I'm getting ready, I have a meeting tomorrow with a graphic designer. She's a student, you know, she's about to graduate college. She sent me some of her work and she's brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I kind of know her a little bit and her personality is just really bright and up and positive, but powerful, you know, she's a powerful spirit. And um, I'm really looking forward to maybe using some of her work. As a, as a matter of fact, I'm releasing my film next week here on YouTube, and I'm hoping that the poster is her work. So I'll definitely let you know. But it's these interactions that make this work amazing for me. The thing that gets me so excited to do it all the time, even if I'm doing this, making a YouTube video all by myself, you know, I set up two cameras, which I hardly ever do, because it, I notice that when I do this, it creates conversation, and I enjoy that, and I get to talk about it. I get to talk about how I'm using a Panasonic S5 full-frame camera, but I'm also using a Panasonic GH5 Micro Four Thirds, and I'm shooting with a 35 millimeter lens, so it's really 70 millimeters, this angle, you know, this one right here, and this I'm using actually the 20 to 60 kit lens, but I'm shooting at 40 millimeters, full frame. But I have the white balance set at the same, you know, the same numbers. And I just, you know, I'm sure that I'm gonna have questions about it and I'm gonna be able to exchange with people. And I really like answering the comments in my, in my uh, feed. And I just, that's what, it, that's what it is for me. You know, art, art brings us together without question, you know. I've been in bands before where there are people from all walks of life, you know, um, into all kinds of different things, you know, people into, you know, like I'm a jock, you know, I work out. That's pretty much what I do with my life. I love to run. I love to, you know, stretch and I like I'm a, like an exercise scientist, you know, I love it. I love to work with my body. I love nutrition. I've worked with people who are like straight up drug addicts pr practically, you know, I mean, not really, but you know, people who live different lifestyles than me. You know, who hang out, who like to party a lot and go out to the clubs, and I pretty much stay to myself. The only time I really have spent time in clubs in my life, which has been a lot of time, is just performing. I don't go to, I mean, unless, like, I guess when I was in the music business, I went to the clubs a lot, but it was just to hear the music, and it was because I was part of this gigantic community of musicians in New York City, and so, and also, I happen to live two blocks from a legendary jazz club. So I was there. It was like my second home. But I wasn't the guy who went to dance clubs and hung out and, you know, for to meet women and stuff like that, and to connect with people. Like, it's not me. And yet, I've been in bands with people who are into all kinds of different things. And we always come together like, like a family. You know, when you, there's something about working out a song together or working out a play together or, you know, talking about a film, you know, and discussing things in a Q&A, or there's just something about all of that type of collaboration 
even a graphic designer or a PR person, a marketing person, there's something about it that is so human because you're talking about something that you're so passionate about and it makes you realize that no matter where you're from, no matter what you believe in, you have things in common because we are all human beings. I say it all the time, we all want the same things and I really believe that. And so, yeah, that's what I love most about filmmaking and any other art form that I've been involved with. And I think you understand why I made this video. And if not, you probably got out of it, if you're still here, exactly what I wanted you to get out of it. Because you might be completely differently than me, you know, think differently than me, live your life differently. But I've always felt like it's really hard to hate somebody if you get to know them. I believe that. And so I try to let you get to know me on this channel. You know, I'm pretty open, you know, I'm pretty, my delivery is pretty intimate, it's very genuine, I'm not trying to be anything, I'm not trying to be big or, you know, you know, I'm not performative here. And that's because I believe that that'll be relatable to everybody and anybody if they're open to me. Now, I might strongly disagree with you on certain things. You know, I went back and forth with somebody about guns, you know, recently. And, but that doesn't mean that I don't respect that person and like that person, you know. We just disagree. That's okay. So, yeah. See why I made this video? We're going to be okay. We have to be okay. Let's be okay. Let's take care of one another.